Today we are doing a fun St. Patrick's Day themed watercolor painting. So grab your pencil, watercolor paper, and let's dive into it and I'll show you how to start drawing it and then we'll start painting it. So first up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a really cool rainbow coming from a cloud into a pot of gold. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a line that's gonna be curved coming down like this. Kinda looks almost like a candy cane. And then we're gonna come and draw another line out from that. And this is where our pot of gold is gonna be. So this is gonna be our rainbow. And it's cool because we're gonna have it looking like it has a lot of depth to it. So now we're gonna draw the back end to this. So I kinda come right here where that, those two lines are joining and I draw a line out from that. Now I'm gonna draw five lines for where my rainbow is gonna have the different colors. And then I'm gonna do the same back here on this little piece. Okay, so I've got my rainbow and now what I'm gonna do is the pot of gold that this is coming into. So I'm gonna turn the paper and I'm just gonna do the letter C, just like that. And then I'm gonna do another letter C, kind of connecting that so it's almost like a uh, bubble letters, letter C. And then we're just gonna keep it to the turn to the side too and do the pot as well. I think sometimes it's easier um, doing some of these lines when your paper's sideways. And again, that's also kind of the letter C once again. It's just to the side, I think it's easier to see. And I think letter C's, I just draw them all the time in art. They're so useful. Sometimes we just don't see it as a letter C because when it's turned this way, we're not seeing that. Now that that's drawn, I'm just gonna lightly do um, a mountain back in here. And then this is gonna be the sky and some clouds. So now we can tape our paper. Okay, and then I just used artist tape um, that I got off Amazon to tape that border. Now that that's taped, we are going to need a paper towel because we're gonna use part of it for, so I'm just gonna grab some of my paper towel over to the side. We're gonna use that to dab off for our clouds that we're gonna do in the sky. So have a paper towel to the side. And then if you want, if you don't like pencil lines, lightly erase them right now before we start adding uh, our watercolor to this. I'm not gonna erase mine too much just so that you guys can see them, but if you want them to not be really visible, make sure you erase those before you start adding paint on top. Okay, so for this sky, I'm gonna start with like a bigger mop brush. This is a 12 Escoda. Um, I think it's the Ultimo. I think it's how you say the, the style of this brush. And I'm just gonna grab a whole bunch of cobalt blue for my sky. Just using a bigger brush in general will help this go a little bit faster and it won't kind of dry on you. And because my mountain's gonna be darker than my sky, I'm just gonna actually pull my sky down into the mountain range. You get a little bit into your um, rainbow, just dab it off with paper towel. Okay, now that I've got my sky painted in, this is where I can kind of come take my paper towel and I kind of crumple it up and we have to first put in the cloud where the rainbow is coming from and then put some more clouds in here. And then I even like coming back after I pull some of those clouds off and then adding just a little bit of the sky back in, in some kind of random areas, just to kind of help darken some spots. And then you can always come back with paper towel. It's kind of like, I like going back and forth. I kind of put some paint on, take some off, try and kind of play around with I'm even gonna grab my smaller eight round brush 
and just put a little bit back in there in spots. As long as the paper is still wet, you can kind of always come in and play around. Once it starts drying is where you got to be careful. Okay, I think those clouds are looking pretty good. I wanted that one to be a little bit bigger just because that's where the rainbow is coming from. Okay, I'm gonna leave that. I think the clouds look good. Now I'm gonna come in and do a light wash of just a uh, yellow with a little bit of green mixed into it. So I have lemon yellow and I'm gonna do a little bit of Windsor green into it. Maybe a little yellow ochre. Just something to cover the ground. Doesn't have to be these exact colors. And because our pot is gonna be darker, you don't have to worry about if this gets in the pot, that's gonna be darker anyway, so. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is dry this and then we're gonna come in and start doing the rainbow. Okay, for the rainbow, I would have a skinnier, smaller brush. Um, so I'm using an eight round, but the tip on this is pretty good. But just something where you can kind of get in here, especially back in here where it's uh, a little bit smaller, it could get hard. So let's, and you can paint your rainbow however you want to. All of this is always however you wanna do it. This is just how I'm doing it. I'm gonna start with um, red. I'm gonna go ahead and because that's wet, I could just pull my blow dryer out and blow dry it to then do the next color. But instead of doing that, I'm just gonna go do the color on the farthest end, which I'm gonna do a purple. So I'm gonna mix that up on my palette. And now this piece of the purple, we don't see on the very top of the rainbow. So, but we do see it back here. And I'm gonna be careful not to touch that red because I don't want that to bleed together. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is dry that and then do the next few colors. Okay, so next to my red, I'm gonna do yellow. Then I'm gonna rinse off my brush. And then I'm gonna do blue next to the purple. Okay, and I'm gonna dry that and then all I have left is green. Also, this is just a heat gun. I always get asked this and I just got this off of Amazon. I think I just typed in like DIY craft gun or something like that, um, craft heat gun. Anyway, it's just a really hot kind of easier tool to use for like a blow dryer, but it's like a, a little bit hotter than a, like the highest blow dryer setting. Now I'm gonna grab green and that's my final color on this rainbow. Okay, that looks so cool. We've got our rainbow in there. And again, I love how it looks like it's like really popping out, coming at you, which I think is like the coolest part of this. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is paint the nice pot of gold. So I'm just gonna use, um, I have neutral tint in here. Probably mix it into my purple because I never like just using black straight out of the palette. And I might add a little bit of indigo into there too. Just getting a dark, dark value. And then I'm just gonna come in here and do, do my pot. And I might just leave a few little highlights on it. Okay, that looks good while that's drying. Let's come in and do our mountain back here. So I'm gonna grab a little ultramarine blue a little bit of alizarin crimson. And then I'm gonna paint this mountain back here. Okay, it's looking pretty good. I'm gonna dry this and then we'll come back and do a few last things. 
All right, so now we're just gonna do a few last things. I'm gonna put in quetacridone gold inside my pot. So it looks like we've got gold in there. Okay, and then I'm gonna put some grass down here and kind of add a little bit of detailing into the ground area. So I'm gonna just mix up some greens. I like adding a little bit of red into my greens because um, it kind of tones down the green since red is green's complementary color. So I like doing that a lot. And just, you know, throw out some real fast, fun, little fast strokes going up, going down. And then I'm gonna use this same color on my brush and just put in a little bit back here in the distance, just some kind of lines back in here. Now that kind of helped break that up and give us a little bit of depth going back as well. And then, last but not least, I'm gonna dry this one last time and then add just a little bit darker layer onto our pot of gold and see if we need to do anything else, but it's getting towards the end, we're almost done. Okay, so I'm gonna do one last pass on the on my pot so I can get it a little bit darker. So I still left a little few spots of that first layer just to help them give a little bit more dimension to the pot. So I try whenever I do another layer of anything to not cover up the layer underneath completely because I think it helps give that um, dimension to the object. Okay, last but not least, I think I might add just a little bit darker of a value of green into the grass, just again to now give a little more dimension to the grass as well. So whenever you have like one color down or one value down, if you can then add a little bit of a darker one on top, it really then helps to get um, some more depth into whatever it is you're painting. So I'm gonna go and add a little bit of a darker green. Okay, I'm gonna dry this and then we'll take the tape off and call this one done. All right, I hope you guys enjoy painting this fun St. Patrick's Day themed watercolor painting with me. I will see you guys next time.